All right, well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. This is a, an exciting day, uh, not just here in Atlanta, Georgia. This is an exciting day for all of America. It is the day of the great debate, red state versus blue state. And why this is important to America is this will be a preview of what is to come based on Americans' votes this November. There cannot be a starker contrast between two of the largest states in America, both with wonderful climates, all of the reasons to attract people, yet they are in very different states of success and decline. And I think tonight the American people will hear truth and facts that will support what they already know in their gut, and that is America is in decline, and we need someone to fiercely face our issues head on, come what may, and ensure this nation is successful. Tonight, you will hear from two governors who have led throughout one of the most challenging times in our histories, through a pandemic, through riots, and the outcomes couldn't be more different. Two governors with very different philosophies of governing. Governor Ron DeSantis, who wants you to be free to live the life you want to, be, want to live. Let our free markets, rid of bad actors, drive our success. Remain fiercely committed to the laws of this nation that the will of the people have ensured by remaining committed to the rule of law and upholding our laws. You will hear from Governor Newsom, who thinks that government and radical leaders should decide how you should live your life. If you were in question about how you should live your life, they'll tell you what you should do, what you should say, what you can believe, where you can go, how your kids should be educated. He will smile. He will pontificate about issues. And he will ignore problems that persist and ignore the laws like so many radical leaders do around this nation as we have seen cities implode upon themselves. will ignore laws they don't agree with. Two governors with very differing philosophies of governing. You will hear from two governors with very different styles of leadership. You will hear from Ron DeSantis, who believes as a governor it is his job in the short amount of time he is given the opportunity to lead a state, be a steward of a state, ensure its success, to use that time to get things done. I have watched him time and time again as an attorney general that works closely with him, roll up his sleeve, clears out the rot, fixes problems, fights the false narratives that come. He is fueled by a passion to see progress and do that within his time of office. I have watched this man work tirelessly and get results for our state. And he does this in the face of vitriol, personal attacks. He does it with his head down. He is driven. He is determined. And the results and Florida's success show that. I compare that with the style of leadership of Governor Gavin Newsom. He'll go to a problem and comment that his state looks like a third world country. He will do so with a smile, senselessly, extensively pontificating on what the problems are, but yet has somehow been in office and has been able to show no progress, no accomplishments, no results on fixing these problems. The difference is this. I submit you have an expert in remediation and construction, a specialized worker, versus the two-bit salesman that sold you the service. The last five years through COVID, through riots, 
they exposed the weaknesses and strengths of these leaders. And not just their leadership talents and skills, but their leadership values and principles and why the conservative way, the Ron DeSantis way of limited government, fierce adherence to protecting the rule of law and the men and women that serve. That is what ensures a state's success. That is what will ensure the America that our founding fathers envisioned and that our children deserve. The results are clear. I believe they are beyond debate. You will hear tonight the results that should leave no doubt in Americans' mind about what style of leading, what philosophy of governing should take hold in our states to ensure their success. Americans will have no doubt which governor has done that and succeeded. If you look at the number of people that are uprooting their families and moving, Florida leads the nation. More people across this United States of America are choosing Florida and moving their families, leaving extended families, leaving jobs that they've held for years. And they are doing so because they want to be in a state that values them, their rights, and their safety. Compare that to California, who is leading the nation in residents fleeing. Florida is attracting the most. California is losing the most residents. And you have seen that exponentially increase under Governor Gavin Newsom. In Florida last year, we led the nation in business formations. 1.5 million businesses were created in the state of Florida. This year, California is leading the nation in layoffs. Florida has soared in fiscal health, in fiscal success. We are always mindful of keeping our financial house in order, ensuring we are protecting the, the, the ability of businesses to thrive, ridding our markets of bad actors, and at the same time, we are reducing debts. Florida, in 2023 budget year, will have a $5 billion surplus. Compare that to California, and Governor Newsom had to admit they will face a $22 billion deficit. And probably the most stark difference between Florida and California that cannot be disputed that drove the now Floridians standing behind me to our state and so many others like them was that in Florida you have a governor that understands the primary function of government, yes, is to protect your individual rights and liberties, protect our state's ability to control the direction of our state and set policy. But it is also government's responsibility to protect your citizens and your communities. And when you've seen cities around this nation like Portland, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Oakland, I could go on and on, implode. Cities that were once thriving are now shells of their former selves. The same can be said of California. And when you look at California and you see that they have basically legalized retail theft, their policies encourage more organized theft, they set zero bail policies, which encourage reoffending. They are routinely releasing folks from detention that are repeat offenders or violent offenders. And they are supporting, not even condemning, rogue fake prosecutors. Prosecutors that are supposed to be the helm of law enforcement within a jurisdiction, within a state, that are supposed to stand up for people and protect victims. In Governor Newsom's California, 
you have prosecutors that side routinely with criminals. And you ask the folks behind me and you ask the folks that have remained in California and they'll tell you, it is a living hell in many places in that state. I think you'll hear tonight that in the state of Florida, thankfully, we have a governor who said absolutely not. What is happening around this nation is never going to happen in the state of Florida. And more than that, it should never happen in the United States of America. And when Gavin Newsom says he can't believe this, this looks like he's standing in a third world country in his own state. Do you think he ever sat back and asked himself who was to blame? Who's in charge of California? In Florida, Governor DeSantis came out strong and said, organized retail theft, we will not tolerate that in Florida. Not only are we going to strengthen our laws to make sure it's easier to go after these mass organized retail theft organizations, we're going to put together a task force. We're going to make sure there's resources dedicated. We're going to set up an exchange so that retailers and law enforcement can communicate. And while Florida is taking down massive cases, 20 different retailers, $20 million in theft, we just announced that out of my office this month, and cases like that, in California, stores like Target, Walgreens, Whole Foods continue to close. Those are stores that people need in their communities. Those are stores that prop up and provide resources and supplies to families. I can tell you as a mom of a school-aged child, it really bothered me if stores like that stopped closing. My mother-in-law gives me a hard time for shopping and doing grocery shopping in some of those stores quickly on my way home. You need those stores. And communities in the state of California are worse off. Joe Biden, our president, has done everything in his power to turn every state in this nation into Gavin Newsom's California. From energy policies, crime, destruction of the rule of law, he has put gasoline on the fire. Americans are poorer, they are less safe, they are, their interests are put behind political agendas of, in, of our enemies, of radicals, of criminals. Leaders like Biden and Gavin Newsom may smile. They may tell you everything's okay. They may walk right past problems like music on a sinking ship. But a true leader, a leader like Ron DeSantis, will tell you what our problems are, will tell you what our risks are, will tell you what the dangers are. And he won't just do that, he'll tell you how we fix them. And he will do that. He will set off to fix them, no matter how hard they are, no matter how difficult they are to talk about, however uncomfortable those issues may make us feel to discuss on how we got here and how we strengthen a state, how we strengthen a nation, he will dig in and fix those problems. Leaders like Biden and Newsom, they have a demonstrated approach to problems, and it is this. Number one, deny. The border's not open. Nobody's just walking over here. Number two, blame someone else. It's the extremist Republicans. It's their fault. The nation is in disarray. We're being invaded every day. More Americans are dying from fentanyl overdose than we ever, when we lost in wars. And if all else fails, number three, throw money at a symptom and cover it up with a false narrative. That is their solution to addressing problems. I believe real men fix things. I have had the honor of working with Governor DeSantis as his attorney general. I think I have the best job as an attorney general in this nation. I work with a governor who listens, targets the problem, digs in, and delivers results. He will fix the mess that has been created by President Biden and Gavin Newsom, their policies and their misguided approach to governing. 
He will fight the big fights and he will deliver wins for working families and for our nation. Just like he's done in Florida and you're gonna hear about it today. His record is proof that he will live up to the promises that he is making to Americans and he will not let them down. Whether it is economic relief and driving down prices that we feel every day, whether it is making sure that we are fiercely protecting Americans' rights, or whether that is ensuring that we can live and work, retire in communities where we don't have to fear for our safety. Under Ron DeSantis' leadership, Florida has become a beacon of freedom, but much more than that, it has become a refuge of sanity and safety. No one knows better than the people standing behind me today. Each one has a personal story. They have fled the wreckage of the liberal, irresponsible, style over substance leadership of Gavin Newsom. I hope that hearing their stories will put into perspective how the policies that we implement in our states have real consequences on families, on citizens. Each one of me, each one of them, represents the choice that we will face next November. Will we decide that America will be a house structurally weakened by ignoring problems, policies that fuel destabilization and decline, or a house that risks failing? Or will America, under a leader like Governor Ron DeSantis, be a house gutted of rot, structurally reinforced, a house that will endure for generations to come, a house that will protect those that live there. Each one of these people knows what the choice should be. Each American knows in their gut what the choice should be because there is no choice. The folks behind me were previously Californians who are now thankfully Floridians. And I am so proud of them and thankful to them for being with us today to share their stories. So without further ado, because I'm sure you're all excited to hear from them, I would like to first bring up Noah and Kelsey Howard. They reside in Milton, Florida, and came as a result of our law enforcement recruitment program. Governor DeSantis launched a bonus program and ways that we could train and help and support law enforcement officers. They heard that call and they answered it. We're so grateful for them. Hello, my name is Kelsey Howard and this is my husband, Noah Howard. So just like she said, um, we both grew up in Southern California in one of the most beautiful state, uh, states and cities. I grew up in San Diego and he um, grew up in the outskirts of San Diego. All of my family is there, all of my friends are there. Um, when Noah and I got out of the army, we decided that, okay, we really sat there and thought, can we really start a family like we wanted to in San Diego? And unfortunately, we had to choose, uh, you know, living and so we, relocated to Florida, and now we're in the most beautiful area in Florida, I believe, the Panhandle, and we welcomed a beautiful baby girl in January, so she's 10 months old now, and by the age of uh, 26, we have owned two homes now, and that wouldn't have been possible in the state of California, I know that for a fact, and um, so I'm just really proud of both of us, and so happy to be Floridians for life. My name is Noah, and like the general attorney said, we moved here because I was a, I'm a law enforcement officer, and law enforcement in California and law, law enforcement in Florida are two very different things. Um, Governor DeSantis had a program where he would give money to law enforcement officers coming from out of state, federal, anywhere, and I, I took it upon myself and me and my wife to take on that challenge, and I came here, I took the course, uh, I became a state certified Florida law enforcement officer, and it's been the best decision we've ever made, and Florida is the best for anybody coming from California. It's just the best decision they, they could make. We really need a president who will actually support police, though, and not just talk about it. And we've heard a lot of talking about supporting police, but we need somebody that will actually get down and, and actually support us. 
and we need a president who will make sure that young families like us have a chance to pay all of the bills on time. In California, we, that wouldn't have been a possibility, but like we said, we've owned multiple homes in Florida. We have you know, good retirement, and that's what we need in this, in this country. Thank you. And thank you so much for your service, both in our military and among our blue. We are so grateful. Next, we will hear from Jay Berman. Jay is from Fort Lauderdale. He is also a veteran, a Vietnam veteran. Hi, my name is Jay Berman. I'm a Vietnam vet, and I moved to Fort Lauderdale from San Diego two years ago. The, um, what's happening in California and in San Diego has just become untenable. Uh, the homelessness, the vagrancy, the crime, in good areas, you couldn't leave your house. You'd have, you'd have to have pepper spray or something with you because it was, it was getting that bad. After uh, the virus, California put a lot of my clients and friends out of business. Restaurants closed, the, the lock, lockouts, it was really terrible. And uh, at the end of 2020, I saw no other I didn't see any future in California. So I made the decision to get rid of everything I owned and head east and wound up in Fort Lauderdale. The difference between California and, Fort, and, and Florida is um, it's, it's just two totally different opposite states, two totally different opposite governors. Um, one of the main reasons I moved here was because of Governor DeSantis. These things that happen in California just aren't tolerated here. And I love my life here, and I wish California well. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from Julie Gebhardt. Uh, she came to us from California uh, because she has young children and wanted to see them thrive in the education system. That's right, thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, my name is Julie Gebhardt and I did spend most of my life in California, uh, the once beautiful state. Um, I left California specifically for the prosperity of my family. What my six kids endured in the classroom was indicative of a state in decline. Policies impact everyone's day-to-day -day experiences and the policies in California shaped a culture in schools that was toxic for my children. My daughter experienced a communist math class. Let me explain. She was taking math tests at a group, like at a group setting with her table where they were working together. My daughter deserved an A, but because she couldn't convince her classmates of the right answer, she got a D. Um, another daughter came home from school expressing outrage for Trump. Now, she was in eighth grade. She didn't have any understanding of political things, and yet she came home borrowing this from her government teacher in eighth grade in 2019. And at 12, like I said, she just did not have enough knowledge to even understand this type of anger. Um, and the worst part is that my kids received scorn for their conservative Christian values. Um, we didn't need the schools to support our beliefs, but it was just a sad reality to wake up and realize that they were actively working against us and our values, which were simple. Our values were just to love God, to love family, and to love your country. And my children also found themselves alone arguing with even their lifelong church friends who had been pulled to the left. And they were arguing about white privilege. And my daughters were learning, instead of learning math, they were learning to defend themselves from accusations of unconscious bias. This is a direct result of leftist policies cultivated by Newsom that were shaping the culture there. My kids became increasingly isolated in their convictions and morals. And as a result, California sadly became a place that they wanted to leave. They were begging us to leave because the culture had shifted so far. So we left California and headed for the promised land of Florida. Now we homeschool our children in Lithia, Florida, and my kids are supported with the policies of our governor now. We have access to funding for homeschooling so that we can afford opportunities that we would have forfeited if we had stayed in California. You may not know this, but Florida ranks number one in education freedom because the culture that has been created by our governor puts families first, not the teachers unions. 
I've been speaking up at school board meetings about the pornographic material being offered to kids in schools. And we have all seen the, the advocacy of Governor DeSantis and his willingness to expose and fight against the sexual content that has snuck into even Florida classrooms. I'm here supporting Ron DeSantis for President of the United States because my kids' futures were rescued because he kept Florida open and free. And I believe that every child deserves the same opportunity that mine now have. I'm also supporting him for president because I know he will lead from the White House the way he has led from Tallahassee, boldly and with an eye toward what is best for our kids. There's a reason that 500,000 or more have left California in the last two years. There's many reasons, in fact, but there is a reason, too, that Florida has the greatest population growth in the country. The policies of prosperity that are being successfully enacted in the great state of Florida are that reason. So I want to say thank you to Governor DeSantis, and may God bless America. All right, we are now going to hear from Ja Ross and Jean Coulomb. Hi, my name is Jean Coulomb. This is my husband, Ross. Um, we're actually born and raised in California. Um, I can honestly say I don't think I would ever say I was going to move to Florida. Um, for me, I could probably give you multiple reasons why we'd rather be here with the policies and Governor DeSantis. Um, but for me personally, it was about my safety. It got to when you go to the store, you, we literally would be in a store and watch carts of merchandise walking out of the store. Employees couldn't do nothing about it. It's more, you can steal a large amount of money and nothing happened. They protect who's stealing. Um, the homelessness, the mental issues of not being able to stand in front of a store waiting for it to open, I, I was afraid. And here, I'm not afraid. I don't go to a store and have things locked behind the counter if I want to get you know, toothpaste or a contact solution. Everything there was locked up. So it was a big culture shock here <laughs> to be able to go into a store and feel safe and know if somebody does something wrong, they're actually going to be held accountable. So that was the biggest reason for me. Well, hi, my name is Ross Coulomb. I've been in California most of my life, except for the last three years in Florida. Um, for me, it was um, basic that I've been disillusioned in California politics for years. I'm, a politic fanatic, but it's just over the years it's got deteriorated to a point where it was I had enough, and then the uh, the COVID thing hit, and I had a small business. I've had small businesses in California for 25 years, and between the COVID lockdowns and the mask mandates and all the the draconian measures that the governor of uh, California Newsom was doing to us. I felt I, like I was in a communist country or something. I, I wanted to escape it. I wanted to get to somewhere was I felt free and like America used to be like when I grew up in California. And I found in uh, Florida it was more so, um, I've been following Ron DeSantis for years. I even remember him as a um, congressman that uh, he was all about uh, freedom and liberty and doing things for the people, not being so worried about, you know, uh, you know, high-priced uh, um, corporations and whatnot. I, I see that he was doing stuff for the people, and I just wanted to be a part of that, and and uh, and after m my, me losing my business and all that, and then uh, after six months of being in that, in the lockdown, I just had enough. I said, let's get out of here. We're done. <laughs> and uh, I moved to Florida, and it's like California was when I was a little kid, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and finally, we are going to hear from Steve Grassi, who uh, moved to us uh, from California, and he was a former New York police officer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Grassi. And I'm a former police officer with almost 35 years of service from both, as the Attorney General said, New York City, as well as the state of California. In 2013, 
I retired as a lieutenant from the Port Authority Police Department in New York City and moved my family to California where my wife was actually born and raised. And uh, there I served proudly for an additional eight years with the Sutter County Sheriff's Office, which is in Yuba City, California, about 30 minutes north of where uh, Gavin Newsom reigns. In uh, 2022, we had had enough. We were fed up, we were angry, we were scared. It was so bad that we could no longer survive there. The California that we once knew no longer existed. To protect our family and our God-given freedoms, we decided to follow the mass exodus and to move to the free state of Florida. When I moved to California in 2013, it was eye-opening. It gave me a first-hand look at failed legislation, which on any given day consisted of, which you've heard redundantly here, endless homelessness, persons urinating and defecating in the streets, the constant harassment of business owners and their patrons, uh, drug addiction running rampant everywhere, needles everywhere because of needle exchange programs, skyrocketing gas prices, sometimes as high as $11 a gallon, electricity so high that you couldn't run your air conditioner. If you did, you probably ran into a rolling blackout or brownout. If not, then the servicer, which was probably PG&E, would um, have these smart days, which if you ran your electricity anywhere between the hours of two and nine o'clock, usually on the hottest days, uh, your fees were exorbitantly raised. In my experience, Governor Newsom tries redundantly to take away the tools law enforcement uses in order to do their job. Like recently, when he proposed legislation to take away canines, I believe his mindset is that if he can't defund us, he'll try to frustrate us to the point where it's almost impossible for us to do our jobs. Why would any police officer want to work for somebody who stands behind the people that vilify us? Do you know uh, Governor Newsom has the distinction of being the first governor not to meet with the California Sheriff's Association as five years as he's been governor, he's never met with them once when every other governor in the, in the history of California has met with them. But yet he still propagates legislation without consulting the people who are the experts in public safety. And then there was the hypocrisy during the lockdowns, the mask mandates, the rules about not congregating with other families during the holidays, all while he ingratiated himself at the French Laundry in Napa Valley with his friends and family, some of which were part of the California Medical Association, the whole time maskless and breaking his own mandates. Or let's not forget about the time when he told us we couldn't go to church or congregate in large crowds while he again enjoyed himself maskless again, breaking his own mandates again at SoFi Stadium. And when he was caught, what did he do? He lied again. And he said, well, I just did it for a photo op one time. And then when I took a drink of water until video had surfaced that showed him maskless the entire time. You see, Gavin Newsom's administration is built on hypocrisy. It's about do as I say, not as I do. He doesn't set the example. No one was ever free, not free to make your own decisions for your kids, not free to make your own medical decisions, not free to go to church, not free to congregate with your family, not free to exercise your Second Amendment rights, never free, always under his rule. Then in September of 21, 2021, I wrote a, lover, a letter to Governor DeSantis telling him who I was and how, how I had been watching him fight 
for our God-given freedoms for Floridians and how I wanted to move my family to the free state of Florida and work for him in some capacity. I told him I didn't care what it was. I'd scrub toilets if that's what he wanted. I just wanted to work for the governor. And now I work for the governor. I support him and his family and know that only he can restore our country. Why? Because I've watched him do it time and time again. Few leaders are as principled and unwavering as Ron DeSantis is. But also, I've worked with a lot of leaders in the police department and in the service, and no one compares to keeping his word. Not just keeping his word, but he's out there, boots on the ground, shoulder to shoulder, getting dirty with the people that are doing the job. And he's the first one in, and he's the last one out, but only when the job is done, and only when the job is done correctly. I'm supporting Governor DeSantis for president, not only because he's my boss, but because I know that he's the only leader that can save this country. I can tell you that this is an honorable man. He loves Floridians. He loves his constituents. He loves and stands behind, behind every police officer and first responder more than any other p politician that I've ever met. And you can see that I'm pretty old, so I've met quite a lot. And for every brother and sister in the blue uniform, I tell you this, if you wanna be supported from the top down, if you wanna be treated for the job that you were called to do, then you need to come to the free state of Florida and you need to vote for Ron DeSantis to save this country. Thank you. Well, you've heard some pretty powerful, persuasive stories about the differences between the state of California and the state of Florida. And the results, whether that is fiscal help, whether that is people moving, whatever the results you look at, any core measurable result that would predict a state's success, Florida outshines California. And that is not a mistake. You don't stumble into prosperity. It is because of purposeful leadership, leadership that understands why this country was founded, what our states should and can be as a part of the United States, and every day digs in and delivers on promises he's made to people who have given him this opportunity to be the governor of the great state of Florida. I am proud of my friend, Ron DeSantis, and all that he has achieved for the state of Florida, surely. But I am proud of my friend, Ron DeSantis, for standing up and offering the blueprint to other states and indeed for this country, for all that America can, should, and will be when he is the president. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Yes. You know, I think the American people are hungry for not just what we're talking about right here, right now, but what they will see tonight. And that is because the last five years, and certainly when we were dealing with the COVID pandemic and riots, the difference in approach to governing, conservative versus liberal, limited government versus we'll spend anything and tell you how to live. The consequences of those styles of leadership, the affect on Americans and state citizens has never been more clear. It has never been more fe felt so readily behind decisions. So while these types of decisions and these governing philosophies have always been in play over the last, you know, since our nation's been created, but certainly in the modern history, these governing philosophies have been used and implemented, conservative versus liberal, but what you see is the consequences may play out over a longer duration. The affect from the decision-making may play out over time and so people forget that this consequence may be related to that really horrible, radical policy agenda 
And so they're just living through these bad decisions, and it's kind of like the frog boiling to death in a pot. If it's happening over time and slowly, and then you wake up and you're in a disaster, I would submit to you that's what they're facing in California. I think COVID in the last few years have been a pressure cooker for governing philosophies, the affect of those philosophies, and the consequences, the real consequences on Americans, you see them almost immediately. And so it has demonstrated for America that what we have been saying for so long is that conservative, conservative approach to policies will ensure success. Protecting freedoms at its core of our mission as government, that's what we were set up to do when the nation was founded, if you make every decision first and foremost through the lens of protecting folks' freedom, allow free markets to ensure success by removing bad actors, you will see success. Americans can prosper using their own ingenuity and work ethic. And that's what we've done in Florida and I think Americans are hungry to have the data laid out for them, the approaches laid out for them, the differing blueprints, set forth, because they have felt this for a long time. And tonight is going to be an example on display for all America to see. Yes, sir. And we have here examples of people and they've lost a lot of population, a significant number in the last couple of years. Um, meanwhile, California, so, so some people are unhappy in the cleft. Meanwhile, California keeps electing. Well, there's a lot more than some, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Okay. And the, but meanwhile, the um, Californians keep electing leaders like Gavin Newsom and legislatures that enact the stuff that he wants, and they continue these policies. Why is this? I mean, if none of this works, and if the place has become a so uh, unpleasant to live in so many ways, as we've heard, as we know from the media, why is Californians don't? Well, let me give you uh, a great example of folks watching what has happened over the last few years and saying, and, I, and this is a, an official term, wait, what? Wait, what? That's how we do things? That's the decisions we're making? That's the policies you're driving? That's the priority you're putting on that interest? That's where you're dedicating our resources when we're living in this wreckage in this mess. Let me just give you, and you said about California, you're saying, why are they doing this? I don't know why they're doing that. I think you're going to see a lot of California, like the hundreds of thousands that are fleeing, ask themselves, why are we doing this? In Florida, historically, we have always been a very close state politically. In fact, when Governor DeSantis got in office, the Democrats had more registrants by hundreds of thousands than the Republicans. And watching the leadership in Florida, watching those affect of the governing philosophies, of the leadership styles, watching Governor DeSantis's performance, watching our administration deliver our state in many ways more successful than before COVID, they said, wait, what? There must be something to this. And we now lead Republicans we are now have more registered Republicans, 600,000 more than the Democrats. Florida is now a dark, dark red state. That was not the case when Governor Santos took office. And I believe what I told you tonight, Americans are excited, they're anticipating what they will see tonight. I have folks coming up to me constantly, oh yeah, the great debate. They're excited because they feel gutturally this type of leading agenda over the interests of our citizens, my way, not the people's way, that, only that does not only ensure failure, it so dampens the American spirit and morale and pride and everything that we want for this great country that we know that it is. And it can be again but you have to have somebody that will get there on day one and do exactly what the Ron DeSantis has done in Florida. Here's the problem, here's the problem. That's a disaster. 
get it done. I'll take all of the arrows. I will take all of the criticism. I will fight back on these ridiculous narratives that have nothing to do with fact. Because that's what you have to do to get rid of rot and restabilize a structure, our house. Look, we have one house, the United States of America. We all need to protect this house. That is the only way this country thrives and succeeds as our founding fathers wanted for us. party and still in, in your home state of Florida as well. Are you confident that Governor DeSantis would be able to win your home state primary in Florida if, the, if former President Trump is still so popular? I think uh, Floridians watched Governor Stan DeSantis deliver. I think they saw him do in a very short period of time what other governors across this nation, as you'll see tonight, could not do. And not only could not do, would not do. They see the United States of America declining. They know it needs a revival. They've seen what Governor DeSantis can do in a short amount of time. You give him eight years, he will right this ship. Yes, ma'am. Regarding the Florida Republican Party Chairman Christian Ziegler, according to a local news outlet, he's being investigated for sexual battery. That's my first question. Then I have an on topic question. As well. I cannot comment on that. I have not been presented with any of those facts. I wanted to ask, um, related to DeSantis. What is your response to critiques that he is an absentee governor? Do you agree with that assessment? And like, how do you feel? I haven't heard anybody use that term. In fact, I think he gets more done before breakfast than most people. Uh, it's been amazing to watch the energy level coming out of this administration. I will tell you, when we first started working together, and we came in together uh, as the governor and as the attorney general, I remember vividly, uh, he said, energy in the executive branch is imperative. I think he quoted Hamilton. He was, you know, dead set on making sure that we were driving towards results. We would never become complacent that if there was an issue, we were working on it. And I think that you have seen that in this administration. I think that has been one of the key reasons Florida has been so successful. Uh, and I have not heard anybody use that term, and I doubt you will throughout the duration of this campaign. Thank you, Attorney General. You mentioned that uh, DeSantis or Governor Newsom will acknowledge the issues in the state, and uh, yet nothing gets done. Do you think that Governor Newsom cares about California? I think G Governor Newsom cares about his next political job. I think that bears out in the policy pushes, because the policies he pushed have nothing about to do with the interests of Californians. They have nothing to do with the success of California, if he cared about being a steward of that state and protecting those citizens, if he cared about stores closing, about people bashing windows, about cops being attacked, about the rising violent crime, if he cared about that, he would meet with the Sheriff's Association, not just once in five years. He said he's never met with them one time, the Sheriff's Association, by the way. I couldn't even tell you how many times as the Attorney General and our Governor has met with our Sheriff's Association. You need to ask them and work with them. Roll your sleeves up. What do we do? How do we change our policies? I gave you an example in Florida. Organized retail theft. It's never been this high in our nation. Record high organized retail theft. Oh, billions of dollars, over $100 billion in losses. Stores shutting. We haven't had stores shutting in Florida. The first thing you would do is sit down with your law enforcement for a working meeting, not a press conference. Not some fancy interviews, not some visit to a train station where you can say, this looks bad. You sit down with your law enforcement officials, you roll up your sleeves and you say, tell me what revisions we need to do for policies. How do we change our laws? What resources do you need? Where do I send the check? That's what we do in Florida. That's the difference between California and Florida. And that's the difference between Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. I think he's doing it because he was challenged. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I think he was challenged, and if he backs down, he looks weak, right? Yeah, <laughs> of course. 
Don't you think so? Because he's been to the White House a number of times. Uh, he went to China. I mean, he's doing all the things you want to do to run for president, right? All right, thank you. Thank you.